Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to be discussing my drawing process. The drawing you are currently watching is that of a commission I did for my granddad. He wanted a card for a friend who is getting married and this is what I did for him. So first off, I'm going to talk about where I get my ideas from. There is a few different channels I would say I get my ideas from. One of them pretty simply I'll be scrolling Reddit or Twitter or Instagram or something normally in the morning or the day before and I'll just see something that inspires me. For example the two cats you'll end up seeing in this picture came from a photograph I think I saw it on Reddit of these two cats sat on a wall cuddling I thought that was really cute and then when my granddad asked me to make a card for a couple getting married, it was like the first thing I thought of. So that's what I did. If I'm specifically making a drawing, as in I don't have an idea, but I know I want to draw something, I will generally go to Pinterest. I now have so many things pinned to my Pinterest boards, all categorized, that when I open up Pinterest, my homepage is all like recommendations based off what I've pinned or what I've viewed recently. So it's all relevant to the kind of things I like to draw. So I'll see a few things and I'm like, oh, I could draw this and then I could add this in and I see all these different things and then they all kind of just merge together in my head. And then when I've got my idea or at least vague idea in my head, I'll then discuss, I'll discuss, I'll then think, what do I want to get out of this drawing? So for example, the one in this video, very basic, it's commission for a wedding, romance, love, blah, blah, blah. So that's the, uh, that's what I want to get out of that drawing. That's what I want people to think of when they see that drawing. But generally it, my aim normally is how do I feel about what I'm drawing or why am I drawing it? Uh, I'm currently going to therapy and I'm very interested in psychology and how my brain works so whenever I have an idea for a drawing I'm like why am I drawing this what do I want from it whatever my aim is I try and like amplify it as much as possible without it seeming weird <laughs> the next thing I do is I research my idea so I break down the idea I have in my head so say I'm drawing, I don't know, I'm drawing a vampire and a ghost having a walk through the park. Really random idea. I will break it up so vampire, so I need a load of things about vampires and what they look like and male, female, hairstyles, clothing, all that kind of stuff. The ghost, what do people think ghosts look like? How would I draw a ghost? You know, everything to do with that, almost like... You're almost making tiny little mood boards for each aspect of your drawing. When I've got more of a formed idea, so like I just said, vampire ghost walking in the park, I'll do some googling and see if any other artists have done something similar. This is not to steal their art or anything like that, it's more to see what they've done and to purposely not draw exactly the same thing. Plenty of people can come up with the same idea. You don't want to be accused of copying and it's it's a sad fact, but especially on social media, people will accuse you of that, even if your intentions are completely pure. So I just wanna see, have any other artists done something similar? And if so, what can I do differently that makes me stand out compared to what they did? It's also very good when you see a different drawing, maybe it'll spark an idea in your head. Oh. I didn't even think about doing that. It's not the same idea, but it adds something to my drawing that maybe I'd not thought of. The next thing I move on to is my sketching process. I used to use mechanical pencil, but if you've seen recently, I've been using my YPO pencil that I got from Scrawlerbox. I'll do a few very basic sketches. I'm talking like just blocking out in like random little squiggly shapes where I want the characters to be or the tree or the skyline or it's literally just to give myself an idea of how to put things on the page. I have a habit and I still do it sometimes when I'm too excited and I just kind of start a drawing without doing any kind of little sketches. I'll find my characters are like too far to the left or too far to the right. There's just weird blank space and then you have to try and figure out what can you do to balance it. So if I remember, I do try and do a few basic sketches to start myself off. Now this is something that I wish I did and I remember to do it sometimes but not always. 
sketch lightly. It's It sounds so simple, but honestly, it's the easiest thing for me to forget. I'll just be sketching away, not really thinking about it, and I think, oh, I've messed that up. So I'll go to erase it a bit and draw it again, and then I can never really erase it completely. And it's so frustrating. If you're doing a background, like you're colouring it in completely, it doesn't matter as much because you can kind of cover it up. But it is something you should just try and avoid so you don't have to worry about it. Don't be afraid to change things frequently. Don't feel bad about like having to erase like half of it or the whole thing or restart it completely because it's better to take that extra time to restart something than to try and see it through to the end and end up hating the end product. Because I don't know about any of you but I will spend an hour or two drawing something that I wasn't really fond of about halfway through but I think well I've already put like an hour into it I'll just keep going. So I spend another hour on it and then at the end of it I'm like like, oh, I don't really like it. And then I spent two hours on it. Whereas an hour in, if I'd gone, do you know what? I don't like it. This isn't working. I need to just do it again. I may have then spend three hours in total drawing instead of two, but I come out with something that I actually like versus something I don't like. Because art's supposed to be fun, at least to me. It's fun, it's therapy, it's happiness. So forcing myself to draw something I'm not really enjoying is completely pointless. Now we're going to talk about line art. I think you may have noticed but when I use a fine liner I will kind of sketch still. I won't do like one line, I'll do a few and that's more just because of the way I draw. So I have kind of shaky hands so to compensate I'll like do the sketching motion because that means I can get the lines the way I want them to and even if I make a little mistake it doesn't matter because you don't notice it. So don't feel like you have to do the line art in one clean stroke. Do the line art the way you feel comfortable because I think a lot of people are scared of doing line art because it's very final. You know the sketching is one thing, the colouring is one thing but for some reason the line art is so obvious and prevalent people get really in their heads about it and I do it too. So do the fine lining the way you want to and don't worry too much about what you think you should be doing. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the colouring which is the fun bit. It's the bit everybody seems to love doing. I will pick out the base colours, I guess you could call them. It'll be the lightest colour, so if I'm doing an area in purple, it will be the lightest purple, because then at least I can layer it up with darker colours, or if I started with a darker colour, it'd be difficult to lighten it up. So I will take the whole drawing and I will colour the whole thing, almost like a paint by numbers, so this area is pink, this area is green, very basic, no shading, just flat colours. I do this mainly so I can see how the colours will balance. Then what I'll do is I'll choose the focal point of the drawing. That doesn't necessarily mean the centre, it's more the largest surface area or the most important part to it. And I'll go in with a medium shade and then I'll go on top again with a darker shade and then I'll go back in with my lightest shade and like blend it out. Once I've done the colouring, I'll then go on to the highlights or like what I call the finishing touches. So one of the main finishing touches I will generally do is I'll take my thickest Copic marker, which is the black Copic original marker or classic marker, and I'll go around the drawing. I don't always do this, it depends. It just, it's kind of the thing where you just have to play it by eye and go off what you like, but I just feel like it makes the main area of the drawing stand out a bit more. I'll then go in with my trusty white gel pen and I will find the lightest areas and I'll just add maybe like a line or a couple of dots or just something to give the piece a bit more like interest and texture. And what I also tend to do is I'll add a few like gel pen bits not where the light is. It doesn't always work but sometimes it looks really cool like I think in this drawing I do little dots on the veil it just breaks that like block of colour up a bit better so I think that the white gel pen is so useful it's another thing that I can't believe I didn't used to use and then ever since I've used it I've been like wow why was I not using this like five years ago so to summarize the way I do a drawing is I find an idea via social media or I purposely search it out I'll then research each section of the drawing and make mini mood boards of each section 
I'll then do my sketching and I'll keep sketching and keep sketching and maybe redo it if I don't really like it but I make sure I'm happy with it before I carry on. I'll then go into my fine lining where I will do the whole thing and make sure it's exactly how I like it. I'll then go into colouring I'll do a flat amount of colour and then I'll go into each area starting with the focal point of the drawing and I'll do all the shading from there. I'll then go into the highlights or the final pieces of the drawing using a thick outline pen and my white gel pen to create interest and texture in the whole piece. I hope you found this video interesting and informative and I'd really like to know some little tips and tricks that you do when you're sketching or drawing like how would you do things? Would you do things the same as me or do you do things differently? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video please give it a like. If you really liked it consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!